Rogers Show. Starring Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, Trigger, his Golden Palomino, and Dale Evans, Queen of the West. With Pat Brady, his comical sidekick, and Roy's wonder dog, Bullet. Folks, uh, hold it. We'd like to take your picture for the recorder. <laughs> now, I want you all to give me your best Sunday go to meet and smile. <laughs> Don't run away. <laughs> now, hold it. Uh, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Uh, Mr. Wilson. <clears throat> that wasn't a very flattering shot I got of you, Mr. Wilson. Thank you very much. Wait a minute, Mr. Wilson. Don't you want your picture took? I'm not interested in posing for pictures, young man. I have more important things to do. <laughs> Some people ain't got no respect for a press photographer. Say, Dale, where's Dimples Brady of the press? <laughs> oh, he's outside taking some pictures of the new arrivals. <laughs> Hello, Dale. Hello, Roy. Hi, Hi Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Welcome home. Did you have a good trip? Roy, this is the first time I've left Mineral City in 40 years, and I sure hope it's the last time. <laughs> well, good. Would you like a cup of coffee? Yes, I would, Dale. Thank you. Hey, I noticed they've started taking off those lots on that piece of property you sold. On that what? On the part of the ranch you sold to the Mineral City Land and Cattle Company. What are you talking about, Roy? I didn't sell any land. You didn't? No, I haven't sold any land since I acquired that ranch. What is this about laying out lots? Well, oh, Mr. Wilson, there are surveyors there, and men driving stakes in the ground showing where the lots are. That's right, Mr. Wilson. Seems like they're going to sell it for building sites or small ranches or something. What part of the ranch is it? Down at the south end near the river bottom. Well, I'm going to get the sheriff and find out what this is all about. Why don't you have your coffee first? You must be tired. <laughs> no, thanks, Dale. This is more important. I'll go along with you. Oops. <laughs> oh, hi, Mr. Woodruff. Uh, Hello, Amy. Well, there they are. My first pictures for the recorder. Good boy, Pat. Did you get the names of everybody in the pictures? No. Am I supposed to get their names? You'll never make a good reporter or press photographer unless you get the names and addresses of everyone you snap. Well, Seth, I know most of them, and I can identify them after the picture's developed. That's a pretty sloppy way of doing things, Pat. On your next assignment, be sure and get all the facts. Okay, I will. And another thing, Pat. If you're really serious about working for us, you'd better get yourself a good camera. One of the flash bulbs, you can take pictures at night. Well, this is all I had. And I'm not putting out any more money until I make some. Well, we'll keep our promise. We'll pay you $3 for every picture we use in a reporter. Now it's up to you to develop these. Okay. Now, have you got me another assignment? Uh, what's on the books, Amy? Well, oh, they're laying out stakes for that new development down at the south end of Wilson's old ranch. We could use a picture of that. Swell. Well, I'll get right down there in Nellie Bell. As soon as I develop these. Oops, oops. <laughs> um, bye. <laughs> well, that takes care of this section, Tom. Yeah, looks like we're in business. Hey, look. Here comes trouble. Watch yourself. Uh, stop worrying. We're in the clear. This deal is airtight. Where's Clue? He's over in the shack. Colton may need some help. Well, Mr. Wilson, when did you get back? Never mind when I got back, Mr. Colton. You take your men and those stakes and clear out of here. Are you serious? You heard me. And if you don't, I have the sheriff here and you'll be arrested for trespassing. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Wilson. You sold this land to me. Sold this land to you? You're crazy. 
Well, there shouldn't be any argument about this. If Mr. Wilson sold the property to you, it must be recorded. And there should be a record of it at the recorder's office. That's right, Roy. Well, what have you got to say about that? All I've got to say is you can go down to the county recorder's office and look up the sale. And then ask the banker if Wilson here didn't get a check for this lamb. What are you fellows trying to do? Are you trying to say I've gone plumb local? That I wouldn't remember selling this land? Well, I for one know you sold this land to the Mineral City Land and Cattle Company. That's right. We were witnesses to your signature, too. This is some kind of a frame-up, Sheriff. Take those men and throw them in jail. Well, if it's a frame-up, we'll soon know it. I think we'd better ride back to town and check with the county recorder's office. That's a good idea. I demand that you take these men and arrest them for trespassing and embezzlement. I will not stand here and be made a chump of by anyone. And furthermore, I'm going to stay right on my land until these men leave. All right, if you want to be obstinate about it, Roy and I'll do the investigating ourselves. Let's go, Roy. And I'll go with you, Sheriff. I'll show you the deed right in my office. All right. Here, gentlemen. <clears throat> Here we are. Wilson sold me 50 acres of his ranch about two months ago. And there it is in black and white. There's his signature. There's the amount I paid him for the ranch. $1,000, $20 an acre. $20 an acre? Well, that's practically stealing it. Well, that's the price we agreed on. After all, I've got to put in a lot of money developing that land. That's pretty cheap at that. I never figured Jim Wilson would sell his land at that price. Well, there's his signature. And if you don't believe me, you can go down to the bank and ask the banker if he didn't deposit my check for $1,000. As a matter of fact, I've got the cancel check here. It's already been returned to me. Well, let's take a look at it. Why, certainly, gentlemen. Right here. There you are. Made out for $1,000, the Wilson signature on the back. It's made out for $1,000, all right. And that's Jim Wilson's signature. Well, it all looks legal to me. I can't figure out what's got into Jim Wilson. You suppose he might be losing his mind a little? Well, Jim's always been a pretty sharp man. I can't figure it out either. Let me see that check again. Well, according to this date, it was made out while Wilson was out of town. That's right. I mailed it to him over at Boulder City, where he was staying. He gave me the address before he left. Well, how did he deposit it? Why, he mailed it in, I guess. Uh, you can check with the bank on that. And now, Sheriff, this is my land. And I demand that Wilson be kept off of it. I don't want him to start any trouble. The way I look at it, Roy, he's within his rights. I don't want any bad feeling, gentlemen. I want everything to be peaceful. I'll take care of that. Let's go, Roy. Well, are you satisfied, Roy? Not quite, Sheriff. There's something I don't like about this deal. Well, it all looks legal to me, but I'll go over and check further at the bank. I'll ride back and have a talk with Wilson. Well, come on, Nellie Bell. Where there's horses, there's usually people. Now, you listen to me, Wilson. You've bothered us long enough. Now, you get off this land and stay off. Unless you want to get your teeth knocked down your throat. Nobody ever forced me off my land before. And you're not going to start now. Oh, no, you don't. Just a cotton picking minute. What are you two fellows doing ganging up on Mr. Wilson here? Just keep out of this. This is none of your business. Now, will you get out? I'm staying right here. Running out of patience, Wilson. Come on, Mr. Wilson. No use fighting with these two guys. You got the law on your side. Let's go. I said I wasn't budging. Oh, yes, you are.
Pat, let's get him in Nellie Bell and take him back to town. You'll be all right now, Mr. Wilson. I took care of everything. Didn't we, Roy? You sure did. <clears throat> We'll have to take care of it. And the sooner the better. We'd better get to town and see Colton. Well, Dale, we're all set for the lunch crowd. That stew is delicious, even if I say so myself. I hope there's enough left for the customers. Bullet, go get the paper, will you? <laughs> I'm sure anxious to see my picture. Yes, sir. Patrick now wishes Brady of the press. <laughs> Thank you, my good man. Well, Pat, where's your picture? Gosh, I don't know. Well, did you get it to Hal Woodruff in time? Sure, I did. Was it a good one? Well, it was so good I snapped it twice. On one plate? Oh, Pat, it was double exposed. Oh. Well, I'm afraid you'll never make a photographer. Hi, Dale. Hi, Pat. Hi. Hi, Roy. Did you see this? Yes, I saw it. That's the story that crowded my picture off the front page. Plus a double exposure. Well, the sheriff was over at the bank and seemed like Jim did mail in that check. And according to the banker, it was his signature. Said he'd know it any place. Well, that certainly is a mystery. Now, why would Jim Wilson insist he never sold his land to Colton? Well, I don't know, but I'd rather believe Wilson than I would Colton. Well, this story ain't gonna do Colton much good if he's figuring on selling the lots to the citizens of this town. I don't think he's gonna like it very much either. That's just fine. People are gonna think twice before they buy any of that land. That paper had no right to print that stuff. As far as that editor knows, everything is on the up and up. Maybe he knows more than you think. Huh? You know, you boys ought to go down and have a talk with that editor. Right, come on, Tom. Good morning, gentlemen. Anything I can do for you? I'd like a copy of today's paper. Why, certainly. You write this? Why? Just curious. Well, as editor of the paper, I'm responsible for everything in it. That's all we wanted to know. If you're the editor of this paper, you're going to retract that story. Take your hands off me. Better listen to him. You can't scare me. You heard what I said? You better write an article retracting that. Never. You can't intimidate me. Wait a minute, Tom. Let's take him down the back alley to Colton's place where we can be alone and do some sensible talking. Get going. you about this story. Roy, my father's disappeared and I'm worried. Well, maybe you went out for a cup of coffee or something. No, I don't think so. I found this on the floor and he wears it all the time. He had a deadline job to do over here at the compositor's table and he didn't finish it. We didn't like him, Roy. Do you suppose this story has anything to do with it? That's what I'm worried about. You see, Dad took a chance on running this story. He really didn't have any proof, but he believed Wilson, and so do I. I just came back from interviewing him, and he insists that he's been swindled. Well, I have the same feeling. Think we'd better see the sheriff? Not yet. I have a hunch, and I'd like to follow it through. But for your own safety, you better lock up and go over to Dale. But we've got the next edition to get out. Well, never mind that. The important thing is to find your father and keep you safe. So come on, you go over to Dale's and wait for me. All right. Now, you listen to me. I could sue you in court and put you out of business, but that would take time. All I want you to do is to be fair. Just print a story in tomorrow's paper saying that you were mistaken. If there were any question about me being mistaken, I'd know it by now. What are you being so obstinate for, Woodruff? I can't sell those lots while there's any question about them. I know that. Then why don't you be fair? Fair? That's a joke. I suppose you think it's fair keeping me here. All right. Suppose we let bygones be bygones. And I'll tell you what I'll do. 
If you'll print a story retracting everything, I'll take an ad, a full-page ad in your paper and pay you a good space rate. I don't want your money. All right, Woodruff, I've tried to be fair with you, and you won't listen to reason. Now I'm taking things into my own hands. Keep him quiet. Well, hello, Mr. Rogers. What can I do for you? I was just curious about that story that appeared in the newspaper today. Any truth in it? It's a bunch of lies. And I'm going to sue that paper for everything it's got. Well, if it's a bunch of lies, they certainly took a chance on printing it, didn't they? I'll say they did. You know the tax yourself. You've seen the deed. You've seen the cancel check. You aren't sticking up to that editor, are you? That's what I came to talk to you about. Woodruff's disappeared. What do you mean? Just what I said. He's disappeared. Well, what's that got to do with me? That's what I'm wondering. By the way, where are those two men of yours, Mike and Tom? I don't know. Down at the property, maybe. You know, those boys play pretty rough. You know what they did to Wilson, don't you? All I know is that Wilson was trespassing. Do you mind if I take a look back there? No, you don't, Roy. Put that gun away. Not until you get out of here. You're trespassing, and I'm within my legal rights. What do you do with Woodruff? I don't know what you're talking about. OK. You've already told me what I want to know. And remember, Rogers, the next time you come in here, I'll swear out a warrant for your arrest. What are you going to do? Forge the sheriff's name to it? Get him out of here. Take him down to the cabin. Dale, I really should be in the newspaper office getting the next edition ready. No, you should stay here until Roy gets back. Now you try to relax and drink your coffee, huh? I know how she feels, Dale. I'm a newspaper man myself. The paper must come out no matter what happens. Ain't that right, Amy? That's right, Pat. You see? I'll take her over there. I'll guard her. Oh, Roy, I'm having a terrible time keeping Amy here. She wants to go back to the office. That's a good idea, Dale. I just saw Colton slip something under the door, and I'd like to see what it is. I'm going with you. Yeah, me too. Oh, no, you're not. Listen, you were a chef before you were a newspaper man, and I've got first call on your services. You're going to stay here and look after things in this restaurant. Come on, Amy. What happened to the power of the press? Looks like I ain't never gonna live down being a cook. Bullet, at least you're gonna stay here with me. <laughs> it's a conspiracy, that's what it is. If you want your father back safe and sound, you print a retraction of the story about the development. If you don't, you'll never see him again. Well, I'll have to print the retraction. They'll kill him if I don't. Oh, wait a minute, Amy. Give us a little time to see if we can track him down. <laughs> and there's the best little tracker in the world. Now, you better go back to the restaurant and keep this place locked until Dale and I get back. Can I come with you? Well, I don't think you'd better, Amy. All right. I'll uh, gather up some things, and then I'll go back to the restaurant. Do you have a gun? Yes, Dad keeps one here in the desk. Well, you better keep it handy, just in case. That's right. These men of Colton's aren't fooling, Amy. That's what I'm afraid of. I'll change clothes and meet you back at the restaurant, Roy. All right. Come on, Bullet. heading for the rear of the newspaper office. Roy, that's the rear of Colton's office. Yeah. Looks like they took Woodruff from the newspaper office to Colton's office. That's why he didn't want me to go in that back room. I wonder if he's still in there. Oh, Colton's too smart for that. They probably got him at a hideout by now. Well, it's on the trail. Let's go.
long are you going to keep me here? Until your daughter does as she's told. My daughter? What's she got to do with it? She's had instructions to run a retraction of that article. You haven't done anything to hurt her, have you? No, not yet. Nobody's coming. See how it is. Rogers and that Evans gal are on their way here. That's all right. We'll give them a hot reception. No. We'll go out and meet them. I don't want to take any chance of them finding Woodruff here. Where are they? Following the dog on the trail. Let's go. smart enough to send one of his henchmen over to Boulder City, where I was staying, and mail the check to the bank from there. That's right. And it would have been foolproof if it hadn't been for Roy and Dale. Yeah, it was Mr. Woodruff that took an awful lot of courage to print that story. This is a well-written retraction, but I'm sure glad it never went to print. Now we can print the real story of the land swindle. All right, everybody. Why don't you all group behind the desk? Because with the editor and the associate editor in this picture, it's got to make the front page. <laughs> Hey, what's that gadget you have there, Pat? Oh, well, I couldn't afford one of those newfangled ones, so I rigged this up myself. All right, ready, hold it. <laughs> My certain coster. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. Happy trails. 